Hello, in this video, we will be answering the following six questions based on the information we have on the graph given. So the first question says to determine the output level and the price charged by the monopoly. So to answer question one, we use the profit maximization rule, which says that for any firm to make the maximum profit or a firm will make a maximum profit at the point where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. So given that this is the marginal cost curve and this is the marginal revenue curve, the firm will make the maximum profit at this point here where the marginal revenue cuts the marginal cost. This means that at this point here, the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue so thus, we go from the point, we trace it all the way down to the horizontal axis, which represents the quantity. Then we have the quantity that the firm will produce in order to maximize profit. This quantity, Q, is approximately 17.5 units. Once we have the quantity, we go from the quantity all the way to the demand curve from the quantity all the way to the demand curve once we get to the demand curve we trace the point all the way to the vertical axis and this will give us the price so the price is approximately 11.5 dollars so this is the quantity and the price that the monopoly will charge and the output that the monopoly will produce. And this answers question one. Question two says, to determine the profit of the monopoly. The formula for profit is equal to, given the information we have on the graph, the formula for profit is equal to the quantity, then we multiply it with, open bracket, the price minus the average total cost. So, profit equals, from the quantity that we have gotten from question 1, we know that the quantity to be produced by the monopoly is 17.5 units. Then, we multiply it with the price. The price is $11.5 minus the average total cost. The average total cost is something that we have not determined yet, so we need to go back to the graph and find the average total cost. How do we find the average total cost? Well, we go from the quantity, we go all the way to the average total cost curve. Again, we go from the quantity, we go all the way to the average total cost curve. So if we go, we go from Q, which is down here, all the way to this average total cost curve. Once we do that, will get the point here this point so this means the average total cost is approximately eight dollars so we go from the quantity all the way to the atc curve when we get the point on the atc curve which is this curve the atc curve once we go from the quantity all the way to the atc curve we trace it back to the vertical axis and then we get the average total cost amount so the atc as we have gotten is eight so this means the profit will be equal to 17.5 times 11.5 minus 8 will give us 3.5 and then 17.5 multiply with 3.5 will give us $61.25. And this is the profit that the firm will earn as their maximum profit. Next question, which is question three. We need to determine the output level and the price charge by the competitive firm. The competitive firm or the competitive market in this instance represent the perfectly competitive market. So we know that in a perfectly competitive market, the rule for profit maximization 
is also the marginal revenue equals to the marginal costs. However, since we are dealing with the market as a whole, in a competitive market, the marginal revenue is nothing but the demand and in a competitive market also, the marginal cost is nothing but the supply. So this means that the output level and the price charged by the competitive firms in the competitive market is determined overall by the point where the demand is equal to the supply. So this means the demand is this that we have here and not this and the supply is the marginal cost. So if you remember or if you are aware, the marginal revenue of a perfectly competitive firm or a perfectly competitive market is always overall the demand curve of the firm or of the market in overall. So given this, all we just need to do is find where the demand is equal to the supply of the graph. So this happens at this point here, this point. Thus, to find the output level, we just need to go from the point all the way down to the quantity axis and we find that the quantity that the firms will produce in total is 30 units and to find the price in the market we simply go from that same point all the way to the vertical axis and then we get the price as around seven dollars moving on to the next question which is question four to determine the profit of the competitive market now to determine the profit of course as we have stated before the formula for profit based on the information we have on the graph is the quantity multiply with the price minus the average total cost so profit equals the quantity for the perfectly competitive market is 30 in total we multiply it with the price which is 7 and we subtract it from the average total cost so to find the average total cost of the perfectly competitive market we need to go from the quantity all the way up to the average total cost curve from the quantity all the way up to the average total cost curve when we do that what we notice is that we also get the same point as we have gotten as the profit maximization point this same point here so this means the average total cost is also seven dollars so calculating the profit we have 30 multiplied by seven minus seven that's zero the total profit for the competitive firm is zero and this level of profit being zero does make sense because this is usually the profit of the perfectly competitive firm in the long run as they always break even. That is zero economic profit. Moving on to question five. Question five says, compare the monopoly and the competitive market. So how do we make the comparison? Well, there are a number of ways we can do that. The first way can be with the comparison with the use of the quantities so for the monopoly we can see that the quantity amount is 17.5 units however for the competitive market we can see that the quantity is 30 units Another comparison we can make is that we can use the price also. So with the use of the price, the monopoly is charging the price with the amount of $11.5. However, the perfectly competitive firm is charging a price of $7. 
So from this, we can see that in terms of the quantity, the perfectly competitive firm is producing a larger quantity than the monopoly. However, the perfectly competitive firm is getting a lower price or the perfectly competitive firm is only able to charge a lower price compared to the monopoly. So a monopoly charges high price but produces less quantity or supplies less quantity to the market. However, a perfectly competitive firm supplies a lot of quantity to the market but gets less price for each unit sold. Also, another way we can make a comparison is by comparing the producer surplus and the consumer surplus. You can also make your comparison through that also. Moving on to the final question, which is question six. Question six says, calculate the dead weight loss. So the dead weight loss, which is represented with DWL, is simply created as a result of the inefficiency of the monopolistic firm. So the dead weight loss is usually this triangle. That is, you go to the quantity line above the profit maximizing point. So above the profit maximizing point, that is where the marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost, you go all the way to the demand curve. So this line here, and then the triangle that this line forms is the dead weight loss this triangle so this is basically the comparison from the surplus perspective it is the comparison or the result of the loss of the consumer surplus and the producer surplus that is the loss incurred by the economy when the economy shifts from a competitive market to a monopolist or to a monopoly market so to calculate the dead weight loss, we simply just need to calculate the area of the triangle. And area of the triangle is equal to the base times the height, and then you divide it by 2. So in this case, the base is simply go from this point here, where the competitive market operates, all the way to the line that is the base so the base is from here to here so when you trace it down you get it equivalent to this gap that is the gap from 17.5 all the way to 30 so base is 30 minus 17.5 then multiply by the height. To get the height, we go from this point all the way down to this point. That is, from the price that the monopoly charges all the way to the point where the marginal revenue of the monopoly is equal to the marginal cost. And that will give us the height of the dead weight loss. So in this case, that is 11.5 minus... To get this amount, we trace it all the way here. So this is around 5. And then everything divided by 2. So doing this calculation, the dead weight loss equals 30 minus 17.5 is 12.5. And then multiply by 11.5 minus 5, that is 6.5 divided by 2. So the dead weight loss equals 12.5 multiplied by 6.5, that's 81.25 divided by 2. The dead weight loss equals 81.25 divided by 2, that is 40.625. So this is the loss incurred by the economy as a result of operating at the monopoly level rather than operating at the competitive market level and this completes the answer to these six questions thank you very much for watching if you did benefit and enjoyed this video please kindly leave it a like and subscribe to the channel 
Thank you very much. See you in another video.